We have reason to be skeptical about many knowledge claims, and that's assuming our brains are working just fine. But we know that we are, in fact, individually inclined to make certain systemic errors in thinking, errors that can be very difficult to detect, let alone correct. These systemic error potentials are called cognitive biases. They can cause us to leap to conclusions prematurely or incorrectly. One of the most common manifestations of cognitive bias is the confirmation bias. This occurs when we selectively process information that agrees with an existing view, minimising the significance of, or ignoring completely, information which does not cohere with that view. Let's say that I have the belief that students are pretty lazy. I'm more likely to notice instances where students are lounging or clearly not engaged in active work. I'll also tend to ignore situations in which students might be reading or writing or otherwise gainfully employed. Each time I see something that supports my existing prejudices, I give it a cognitive promotion as a confirming instance of my belief. I do the opposite to observations that oppose that belief. It's important to understand that we don't only do this for beliefs we actively want to maintain, but the effect is much stronger if we have a vested interest in maintaining those beliefs. There are a disturbingly large number of ways that our thinking can be skewed. Let's look at a few significant ones. People frequently think that just because one thing follows another, the first must cause the second. But this is fallacious. People frequently appeal to some initial data point in making their decisions, whether it's relevant or not. For example, when people are asked, Gandhi's age. If you invite them to answer the question before or after age nine, they will always give answers lower than to a group who are asked before or after 140. Neither piece of information is relevant, yet it skews their decision wrongly. People frequently make decisions that accord with popular opinion precisely because it's popular opinion. Sometimes the fallacy is called the appeal to popular opinion, but of course, it's fallacious. It's the curious situation where people frequently overestimate their abilities, thinking themselves to be far better at something than they actually are. The alternative, of course, is the imposter effect, where brilliant people think they're nowhere near as brilliant as they are. Yes, people have a tendency to accept descriptions of themselves that could apply virtually to anybody as specifically applying to themselves and lend credibility to the person offering this very general description as if the person was able to judge their character in some way. Framing. Framing is a subtle but powerful effect based on the way words are used in conversation to frame that conversation. So, for example, if I'm asked about Susan being friendly, I'll go looking for information relevant to her friendliness, whereas if I'm asked if she's unfriendly, I'll tend to look for information that supports or concerns her being unfriendly. Tax relief is another example. As soon as we frame it as tax relief, tax is seen as an affliction. The whole debate is now circumscribed by these framing terms inescapably so, typically. Yes, hindsight bias is an affliction that many of us fall prey to, where we think, in hindsight, something is much more obvious than it actually was. Yes, it's really the effect whereby our general impressions about someone, say as good or bad, influences our judgement about their various attributes, whether they're smart, whether they're timely, whether they're efficient, and so on. There are quite a few others to talk about, but you get the idea. We can't always trust our reasoning, even if it feels like we are firing on all cognitive cylinders. Being aware of the cognitive biases helps us to be very cautious in our thinking, both for ourselves and when we evaluate the arguments of others.